Yeah, good morning, great ambassadors of God. I will call every one of you great ambassadors because we are God's ambassador. And as I was seeking God and asking God what's the message for today, the word that I received is chosen. Chosen. We are chosen for His glory. Each and every one of us, we are chosen. We are chosen because He loves us. Why did He choose us? Why did He choose us? Just now I call your great ambassador, right? We are Christ's ambassadors. We are Christ's personal representative. We represent God. We represent Him. We re represent His love for us. We are representative of His love. Because of what He has done for us, the exchange that He has done for us, the Bible said that He died for all so that all those who live would no longer live for themselves. But for Him who died and was raised for their sake. So, the title chosen for His glory, we, because of the love that Christ has, just now as we, we have been singing this morning, the love that Christ has for us, His deep love for us, He died for all of us, and it is all for His glory. We no longer live for ourselves. Our life, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So, when Christ died and was raised for our sake, we live for Him. It is from this time on, actually in, the, in 2 Corinthians 5.16 onwards, it says that we do not think, because of what Christ has done for us, so we do not think like the world thinks. We have new, we are new creation. So we no longer think. In the past, we used to think of Christ the way the world thinks, but now we are new creation. Our eyes are open. So that's why the Bible says that even the mystery is unveiled to us. You know, the mystery of God is unveiled to us. We are children of God. So for those who believe, He lives in us. Christ lives in us. And we live in Him. So that's why that makes us, we are representative. We are representative of God. We are God's personal representative. We are God's ambassador. We represent His love to share His love to the, to the people, to share His love. So now, who is he then? God is a king of glory. He's the Lord of hosts. He's a king of glory who rules over all creation with his heavenly armies. So we are representation of his glory. We are created in his glory. We are created from his love for us. We are created for His glory. You know, but the Bible says that you have made them a kingdom, a royal race, and priests to our God, and they shall reign as kings over the earth. So we are chosen as a royal ra race. We are in the royal, we are royalties in the kingdom of God. We are priests to our God. And we shall reign as kings over the earth. Yes, we shall reign over the earth. Over our circumstances. We shall reign because we have the king of glory inside of us. We have the king of glory living in us. It is no longer that we live on our own. But we live for him. So we are 
a chosen generation. I would say that we are a chosen generation. We are chosen race. God's chosen race. Royal priesthood. A consecrated nation which we are set apart. We are set apart. When we receive Christ, we are set apart from the world, from the way the world thinks. And most of all, we are God's own possession. What does it mean? God's own possession it means that God called us His own possession. It's like we belong to Him and He will never leave us. It is unlike the shepherd who's being paid, you know, to take care of the sheep. But when once a wolf comes, the shepherd, the paid shepherd will run away. But our Lord, He is our shepherd and He will not leave us alone. He will never, He will always be at our back. He got our back. And as a chosen generation, you know, we are God's chosen people. What is it for? So that you may proclaim the excellencies, the wonderful deeds and virtues and perfections of Him. It is for us to proclaim God's goodness. It is for us to share His love it is for us to share His goodness, His glory to others. Yeah, the world. There's, you know, outside the world itself, there's so many hopelessness. So we are to share the hope of glory to the world. And we have been called out of darkness into His marvelous, marvelous light. That's the difference. We are not the same as the people of the world because we have been called out of darkness we used to be in dark darkness whereby we do not see the things of god we do not know god but now our eyes have been opened so that we have been called out of darkness into his light so this is the introduction of chosen for his glory as i was asking god Further into this message for this morning, um, the next thing that he showed me was is wine making. Okay, I, 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 the, the, the word wine making was impressed upon me. So as I was asking God, okay, let us look into wine making process. You all like to drink wine? You know, those who enjoy drinking wine, I'm, I'm saying drinking wine in a natural, huh? We have people who like to drink wine and natural and also wine in the spiritual. So, wine making process, there are many stages, but there are, I would say, there are about four to seven stage, stages in wine making to make wine. First of all, there is harvesting. You need to harvest the grapes. And the grapes are from different region, different location, different climate, different temperature. And then next, after harvesting, there is also the crushing and the pressing of the grapes. So, to produce the juice. So, but during this stage itself, it's also important because this stage, crushing and pressing of the grapes itself will determine whether it is white wine or red wine. And the white wine is produced, typically people will think that white wine produced from white grapes. And red wine is from red grapes. But actually, the white wine is produced from the skin of the grapes itself being removed and the seed is being removed when it is crushed. So that's how the white wine is being produced. Red wine, it is produced, that means all the, the skin of the grapes and the seed itself, it will be crushed all together because that is the important part and how the red wine is being produced. And then the next we have fermentation stage, whereby it's fermented to be um, alcohol. It, it's fermented. Um, it's very important stage because we will use the yeast. They will use the yeast itself to start the fermentation process. And then the next one will be clarification. Clarification is a stage whereby the wine, any impurities, any solid particles, it will be removed from the wine to make it clear because if it is dull and cloudy, it is 
not so appealing. But it doesn't change the the taste and the flavor and the aroma of the wine. But all in all, I'm not going to go further into wine making because we are not making wine. We want to make wine in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, our 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 position here is we want to make wine in the Holy Spirit. But why I'm bringing in this making wine because I want to show that the process is actually to me is very complex. There's a lot of process actually. A lot of stages involved. What I just mentioned are this main stage. Actually, in between, there are still a lot of process, a lot of stages. And different manufacturer, they will try different, different, um, different method or different taste. They will always try different ways or they will try an error how to make the best wine. Because different region, different, it will, it will produce different wine, different taste, different aroma even the grapes itself. So what I gather from here is that all these stages are important actually. None of the, none of the stage itself of the process making wine that it can be taken out. If it is taken out one stage, then there won't be any wine making. You can't produce wine. We can't take out fermentation stage because it is important to have that stage. We can't take out the harvesting. Can you imagine grapes without? There's no grapes, then there's no wine. So I see that all the stages itself, all the process, is like the journey in our life, the journey that we have to go through. There are many stages in our life. And we cannot jump the stage. We cannot mix them up. We can't be like, I don't want to go through teenage life. I want to jump from... Being a baby to an adult, impossible. We have to go through it. Every stage itself, we improve and we learn. So we cannot just bypass one stage. Yeah, we cannot bypass. Even when we learn how to, when we are reading something, we cannot bypass not knowing ABC. Learning how to count, and we want to count something, we can bypass. We need to recognize the numbers. We re need to recognize one, two, three. So we cannot jump, jump queue and then we cannot just... It needs to follow the process as well. But what I'm trying to say is that every process is important. Likewise, we are all important. Even in the harvesting stage of the wine, making, uh, making wine itself, one grape itself cannot produce wine. Do you think one grape can produce wine? One grape, how to crush the... I think it will be evaporated, the, the juice itself. It will be dried up. But the thing is, I see us here. We are all of different shapes, different sizes. We are all from different parts of, of household, different area where we are staying. But we all are together. So I see that it is important. Even it's like everybody here is important to him. Everybody here is important to him. The, we are all having a different purpose. We go through different experiences. We go through different experiences and different purpose for a reason. It is for his glory. So though we all look different, you know, we have got different sizes, different shapes, Different, different complexion, you know, some very tall, some shorter, like me, shorter. So, but the thing is, we are all different. But the thing is, the differences itself, God still choose us. You know, God is not our merit. It is not by how good we are. It is not by how good looking we are, how capable we are, our ability. But God has chosen us. God has chosen us for His glory. I want to read. See, John 15, 16. John 15, 16 says that, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. It is God who chose you first. It's never us who chose who choose God. God chose us 
first. And he appointed and placed and purposefully planted each and every one of us where we are. For what purpose? So that we can go bear fruit. Do we just bear fruit one time? No. We keep bearing. When we are connected to the wine, when we are connected to Jesus, when we are connected to the wine itself, we will keep on bearing fruit. Because apart from Him, when we do not abide and we do not remain in Christ, we are nothing. So we need to keep on connecting to Him. When we connect to Him, our fruit will remain and be lasting. And most of all, you know, Jesus said, Ask of the Father in my name as my representative. So you are the representative of God. Being the representative of God is actually a big deal. Being an ambassador of God is a big deal. It is a big deal. It's really, really a big deal. That's why He has chosen each and every one of us here. It is a big deal. You know, when we ask the Father in anything, He will give to you. Because we ask, because we know who is our Father. We don't just simply ask something and yet we still doubt. But we ask because we know this, our Father, will give it to us. Because we know our Father. We know the things of God. Because it is Christ who lives in us. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And my life belongs to Christ. You know, our life belongs to Christ. You are God's own possession. You are God's personal representative. So whatever we do on earth here, whatever we do in this current state, it is we represent Christ. We represent God. And God chose us just now when we keep on singing, yes, he chooses us because He loves us. It is out of His grace and His mercy, His great love, the depth of His love, that He chooses us. So, every journey that we take, it's a process. Every journey is a learning. Even a baker he will bake and to perfection to write to get the right recipe. So what more? You know, when when if let's say when we pray for somebody, it doesn't happen. It's okay. We try. We keep on trying until we get it right. But the thing is actually right is right believing in our heart. We need to have the right believing. And who are we believing in? Believing in Christ, the King of glory. He has chosen us. He has planted us purposefully, placed us, each and every one of us, in our respective place for a purpose. Whether you are a homemaker, you are a college person, you are working in an office or you are working outdoor or anywhere, God has placed us for a purpose. We all have an assignment from God. We all have an assignment. We have different gifts, different assignment. So we can never compare ourselves with another person. Don't compare yourself with another person, whether the other person is more anointed or not, because that's not the matter. The anointing of a person, that's not what God is looking for. God is looking for the man after his own heart. God is seeking people after his own heart. When God chooses us, He gives the gifts and achievements, abilities, are all brought to pass by one and the same Holy Spirit who apportions to each person individually exactly as He chooses. Means to say that He chooses us first before He gives the gifts. You know, it's not that He gives you the gift first, He gives you the talent first, then only He chooses you. No, He has actually chosen all of us first. That's why He saved the world first. He saved the world before anything else. He saved the world. And I remember I have a friend who actually asked, did God save everyone? 
you know, if God saved everyone, then it's like, you know, did, did God save everyone? Yes, God did. God saved everyone. Then the next question is, then why so many things happening in this world? Why there's war? That one would be the next one. <laughs> Later, there's another slide that um, I will point you the verse itself. Come back to this. So, I will look at it as, just now I say that every part itself, we all make up, one grape itself cannot produce wine, so we individual are together. So, I look at it as the limbs. You know, God has placed and arranged the limbs and organs in the body. We are in the body of Christ. We all have different function. We all have different assignment and purpose. You know, each, each one. So, God has placed and arranged the limbs and organs in the body. Each particular one of them. Just as He wished and saw fit with the best adaptation. So, and then the next one. But contra quite contrary, the parts of the body that seems to be weaker are absolutely necessary. And as those parts of the body which we consider less honourable, these we treat with greater honour. And our less presentable parts are treated with greater modesty, while our presentable parts do not require it. But God has combined the whole body giving greater honour to that part which lacks it. So, each and every one of us here, irregardless of the gifts or talent, each of us, we cannot, the Bible says that, you know, the heart functions, the heart cannot say that I don't want to be the heart, I want to be the liver. Or the liver just say, or the liver say that I don't want to be the liver. I want to get out of this body. The body will not survive. The kidney cannot function without the kidney. If a person has kidney failure, what do you think it will happen to the whole entire body? It doesn't function. I have a friend who has lost his toe, and I remember him saying that even though it's so small, right? The toe, we think that it's nothing. But he said that he seemed not balanced. You know, it's just different. He, 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 he can't balance it. So, all of us are important to God. Each and every one are important. It is for His glory. And I want to bring up something about... Because we live in His glory, we move in His glory, we are His glory. We are created from His love and we are in His glory. Because He is the King of glory. The King of glory is living in us. So we need to move and eat in the glory, with the glory. There's this story of this girl. She was raised by wild dogs. And this is a true story. This is a true story that happened, I think, 2000 plus. And it's not here in Ukraine. So she was abandoned by her parents and she, at three years old, was abandoned by her parents and she was living and raised by wild dogs up to the age of eight years old. So can you imagine what happened? How would she behave and how would she react? She was walking on four legs. She was barking. She eat like the dogs eat. She sniffed. Like the dog sniff, she lick to drink water like the dog drink. And she cleans herself like the dog, how they clean themselves. They don't shower themselves, right? So basically, from the age 3 years old to 8 years old, she was living because she was raised by the dogs. But what I want to say here is that when we are living in the glory of God, when we are moving in the glory of God, we need to live and move and eat in the glory of God. You know, in what Christ has called us. Because like this little girl, this girl, now she's 40 years old. Like this girl, she was, because she was raised by dogs, so eventually her environment shaped who she is. What's our environment? Our environment, it's Christ. 
in Christ, in Christ the greater glory, in Christ. Of course, after eight years, oh, she was rescued. She was rescued by her neighbor. Her neighbor saw somebody um, saw her. Of course, you might be asking why didn't I you know why why nobody have noticed? Yeah, I, I suppose nobody noticed, but somebody noticed her um, and she was rescued and she slowly learned how to eat like a human, talk like a human. They educated her. She slowly know how to, you know, get rid trying to get rid of the behavior of being a dog. And this is real story. This is not just uh, you know, anything that's cropped up. Like last time when we were younger, we hear of Tarzan. <laughs> Tarzan live among the in, in, in the jungle. So, but this is real life story. So what I'm trying to point out here is that we need to move and eat in the glory of God. You know, I, I remember last time, I'm actually, I do have a little business. I do sambal business. So that time when I just started, many years ago, I used to think, how can I generate sales? What do I do? What do I, I do? So day in, day out, even when I was showering, I would be thinking. So even it appears, after that, when I sleep, it appears in my dream. So then I know that I over, over into thinking this. So but if we... Our life is so connected to Christ and we are thinking about Christ, there will be changes in our environment, changes to ourselves, changes to the things that is around us. We will eat, we will sleep, we will dream of Jesus. We will dream of what the vision of God is. We will dream the things of God. We will dream the glorious heavenly realm of God. Because we are spiritual beings in the glory. Therefore, we are called to demonstrate His glory. We are really called to demonstrate His glory. And what is that? Demonstrate His love. Demonstrate the hope to this world. Because this world itself, there's so many things that's happening as you, as we can see. There's so many, many things that's happening. And sometimes people think that, I don't need God. I'm okay. You know, that's self-reliance. I can do it. I have my income. Sometimes things tend to cloud us, cloud our mind. So when Christ, He died for us, He made the offer to everyone. He has chosen everyone, irregardless. So the things that's happening around the world right now, why is it happening? Have you ever thought, you know, like war? Why there's war? Why there's so many people dying? Isn't God doing anything? You know, sometimes these kind of things that people do ask. But I want to point out something here. God came, Jesus came to give you life. He came to give us life and life in abundance to the full overflows. If Jesus give us that fullness, give us life, if God give us life, would He, is He the cause of the war? Is He the cause of all the suffering? The thief comes in order to steal, kill and destroy. But Christ came to give us life so that we may live more abundantly to the full. So, as believers, we are chosen for His glory. Jesus said, we will look into Mary and Martha. Mary and Martha, Mary and Martha, they, their brother Lazarus was sick. And Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, they are good friends of Jesus. So one time they went to, um, when their brothers were sick, they sent a message to Jesus saying that Lazarus is sick. So this is what Jesus replied, and this is what Jesus said. 
No, when Jesus heard this, he said, This sickness will not end in death. But on the contrary, it is for the glory and honour of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. Jesus already said, when he heard Lazarus is sick, so he already said that the sickness will not end in death. You know, but it is for the glory and honour of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. And what happened was, and Jesus didn't go immediately. He went to the place where Lazarus was two days later. So when he went there, then Martha and Mary, they came to Jesus and asked Jesus, Jesus, if you could have come earlier, Lazarus wouldn't die. You know, do you see sometimes circumstances in our life, uh, real life experience, we tend to say that, God, if you have, if you come, I wouldn't be like that. I wouldn't have this pain. I wouldn't have that pain. If you would have been there. But actually, Jesus is there. We have the privilege of Jesus living with us. We need to believe that. Because He already said. So, then, after that, what happened was that at the tomb, Jesus told them, roll the stone over. Roll, open, open the stone. Roll it. And then Martha said, if there will be very strong stench, very, very strong stench, the order, body order, because Lazarus already died for this. So then Jesus said this to her, the next one. He said, did I not say to you that if you believe in me, you will see the glory of God, the expression of His excellence? So He reiterated, did I not say if you believe in me? So we believers, do we believe, how much do we believe in Jesus when He already said that it is the glory of God? You know, you will see the glory of God. So do we see the glory of God, the expression of His excellence, in our life, really. I actually question myself this. You know, this one is um, for the church here. I do question myself also. How much that we want to see? Do we want to just come to church and just sit at the pews? Do we, is that all that Christ called us to do? You know, how much more do I need to listen? Yes, we listen to edify ourselves. But the thing is, our spirit needs to arise. Our spirit needs to love God. We need to love God more. You know, I was talking to someone last week. I was saying that, you know, sometimes we don't see things happening daily. When I say don't see things happening, I'm talking about supernatural things of God. Why? It's not our merit. You know, but how much God loves us, but how much do we love Him? How much do we truly, truly, truly love Him? How much that we put Him and in importance? How much is it that it is so important? Because I, I brought this story of Martha, Lazarus, Mary up. Because Martha seems to be going back to the ways. That means uh, she seems to be seeing the circumstances that she's in. She seems to be seeing Lazarus is dead. That's all that she sees. But she, di she didn't hear. She didn't hear what Jesus was telling her. It's for the glory of God. She didn't hear that. She kept on, on and on. She didn't hear that it is for the glory of God. But yet, she looked into the circumstances. So the circumstances, it's that stone. So if we have any stumbling block, any circumstances that is hindering us, we need to remove that stone so that we can see the glory of God, so that we can see the King of glory clearly. 
There's such a sound like the wine itself, the clarification process whereby it's the removal of solid particles and impurities. It's to, re to make it clear so that the wine itself will, will be very, very clear. It's not dull, it's not cloudy. So likewise, in our life, we need to remove. But how do we remove that? We can't remove it, right? We need Because sometimes it's like, we have gone back to, we always go back to the things, the circumstances that we are in. Disappointment that we are in. Weaknesses. We look into the weaknesses. We look into the disappointments. Or sometimes we don't understand what's happening. So instead of looking into those weaknesses, we need to look into the King of Glory. We need to channel it into the King of Glory. You know, each and every one of us, just now I said that we have great importance. We have strength. God has given you that strength. There's something, there is something in each and every one of us. You know, that's why we function as a church. Even, a, even Superman. Superman, he has got many strength, right? He's uh, known as the man of steel, whereby cannot penetrate, you know, um, he's, he's very strong. And then he has strength, I would say strength as Samson. And, and he has a very sharp ear. His hearing is very sharp. He can hear mouths. Though these are all like, you know, superhero is created. But the thing is, I'm taking this example to show that even in the show itself, Superman, he has this laser eye, he has all this strength and gifts. But yet he has one weakness. And his weakness is kryptonite. All of, you know, all of us have watched Superman before and his weakness is kryptonite. But the thing is, did he let that kryptonite stop him from moving forward? Stop him to save the people? His focus was not on, oh, I'm so fearful of this kryptonite. What is it going to do to me? Oh, where is it going to come? And who's going to throw that kryptonite to me? He's not fearful of that. He's not looking into that weakness. But yet, he just moved forward. He stepped forward into the strength. He looked at the strength that he has and the ability that he can, he can, he can use and he utilized every ability that he has instead of the, the weakness. So whatever strength, whatever ability that you have, use it for his glory, not for our own merit. So that's why just now, the verse itself, in the beginning itself that every organs are together so there is none like this is better than another you know we can't compare we can't compare this person is better than that person this person is more anointed than the other person we have to stop comparing this person is i like to hear this person more than another person preach i like to hear that preacher i like to hear that preacher no we need to come away from that we need to stop that comparison. We need to hear what God wants us to hear. Really, we need to hear what God wants us to hear. Every one of us have a weakness for sure. Everyone. But we don't look at people's weaknesses. Let us look into the strength of the people. And in, in the Bible, this is a command from Christ. John 15, 17. He said, Love and unselfishly seek the best for one another. So we seek the best for one another. We don't seek and point and keep on pointing, oh, okay, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you didn't do this. I expect this, 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 this. But yet, we seek the best for one another. You know, the harvest is plentiful. Laborers are few. Let God unleash the potential in each and every one of us. Dare to step out. Dare to step forward. Dare to try. You don't know what to try? Just ask God. Dare to move forward. We need to do something. When I say do something, but of course, first of all, 
we need to, if we need that passion, that zeal, as our speaker last week mentioned, the zeal of Christ. If we need to rekindle that, rekindle that. Because revival starts from us individually. It always starts from its. So let the whole earth sing to the Lord. We sing praises. We worship God. You know, each day, the Bible said, each day proclaim the good news that He saves. Each day. Honestly, have we been proclaiming the good news that He saved each day? I'm not um, giving guilt here, but this is just speaking from my heart. From my heart as a church. We all need to move forward. We really need to take this King of Glory. Take this King of Glory so serious in our life that it matters when He chose you. He chose you not for your glory. He chose you for His glory. Yeah. And then, publish His glorious deeds among the nations. What is God's glorious deeds? There's so many. If you don't have a testimony to share, you can always share other people's testimony. You can always, because there's always testimony that we always hear, right? We always hear a lot, a lot of testimony. So we share, we share to people. We share and encourage because you, we never know who we would encourage, who actually needs that encouragement. You know, who is probably at that point that they want to terminate their life. We never know who will be impacted by the words that we share, by the encouragement, by the love that we share to others. You know? So tell everyone about the amazing things He does. The amazing things that Jesus does. It is not, it is for every one of us. It is not just for an evangelist or prophet. It is not for a certain group of people. It's not for a pastor. It's not for, you know, people who, okay, I can share. But it's for every one of us. Every one of us. You know, when we are buying veggie also, we can share to people. Why not? We are at a fish market. We can share to people, right? We meet people. We are not living in a cave. But we can share the amazing things of God. It is not important who does the planting or who does the watering. Actually, it is so true. Because what's important is that God makes the seed grow. You can water and then sometimes you don't see the result is fine because then somebody else will or, or somebody else sow and then somebody else water. But the thing is, God makes the seed grow. I remember when I long time ago when I used to share to my family, my sisters, you know, because they have not received Christ, so I, I share. But the thing is, they didn't say that they want. I was hoping that, because I keep on sharing, I was hoping that they will receive it, you know, from my words of sharing. But eventually, and I wanted to bring them to church. They did. But eventually, they didn't uh, stay on. Uh, but what I want to say is that Later on, they went to somebody else water it. I sow the seed, but somebody else water it. And now they grow. They grow. You know, God makes the seed grow. So the one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose. So our purpose, there's only one. We are in the same... We are all colleagues, I would say. We are all colleagues. We are all colleagues in, the, in Christ, really. We all have the same purpose. And I think I don't need to mention what is that purpose. Okay, we have a purpose. But to reach that purpose or to the objective of the purpose is met, we all have different functions along the way. Yeah, so we utilize that function. So both workers, actually, will be rewarded for their own hard work. 
You see, for we are both God's workers. And you are God's field, you are God's building. So it is very important. And this is the last verse. God wants us to know that the riches and glory of Christ are for us Gentiles. In the beginning, I mentioned that we are all we are chosen generation. Actually, in the beginning, the Jews are the promised people, are the chosen people. But when Christ came, He has encrafted us into that lineage, into the covenant with Him. So that's why we are sharing these riches of glory of Christ together with Christ. This is the secret Christ lives in you. Now no longer a secret. But let it be something that we truly believe it as believers and make a difference, really. This gives you an assurance of sharing His glory. My summary here is that we are chosen for His glory because of His love and His mercy for us. And we are here to proclaim the excellencies, the good deeds, the joy, to share the glory to the people around us, to share the hope, to give hope. Because there's so many, so many hopeless people out there. We are in a nice building here. Nice aircon, nice light. We have this. You are very blessed. We are very blessed. Let us share these blessings to others. Let us share these blessings out. If this doesn't, this is something for each and every one of us to ponder. Yeah? And take the step. Take that assurance that Christ in you, the King of glory, the King of glory is in us. It matters a lot. What's that King of glory? The glory of God is so much. There's so much in the glory of God that man, uh, cannot contain. There is so much more. But sometimes what we experience is just so little. It's just so little. I find that there's so much more. But we need to explore. We need to explore. Go deep into God. Go deep into the Word of God. The Word of God is jam. You know, I was telling my husband, I said, wow, the Word of God is jam. You know, I find gems in the Word of God. Because you will find as we read and we dwell into the Word of God, it will transform our life because God Himself is that Word. Daily bread. The song that we sang this morning, He's our daily bread. We need to take that daily bread. Yeah, we need to take that daily bread. Daily, daily. Not just weekly bread or daily bread. We need to be to stay connected. We praise Him. Irregardless, whether you see result. But we praise Him and we thank Him. Little, little things that He has done in our life. The good things that He has done in our life. Every one of us matters. Every one of us matters, really. You are very, very important. God chose you first for a purpose. At whatever age, irregardless your age. Irregardless your age. You may be 80 years old. 100 years old, sometimes hard of hearing, but no. We want to believe that the King of Glory will open up here our hearing. We want to believe that, actually it's not the King of Glory will open up our hearing, you know. Christ has nailed every sicknesses on the cross. He has dealt with it. So what does it mean? Actually, when we believe it, our ears will be open. Our heart will be open. Eyes open. That is how great the King of Glory is. Our King of Glory is alive. So we work together in bringing the, the glory of God, the demonstration of His love. Because none of us, we can just function on our own. We cannot function on our own, really. As a church, we all have different functions. So let us arise now.